The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Your co-host, James McDonald. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. And I'd like to start by welcoming our participants. What we're going to be discussing are performance guarantees. We're going to be talking about how to set yourself apart, how to offer a benefit to your prospects, how to use risk reversal. Um, all of this really falls under the umbrella of performance guarantees, and not just how to advertise and market these concepts, but as importantly, how to verbalize these benefits to your prospects in your presentations, using the universal script over the phone. It encompasses so much of what we do in Craig Proctor Systems. We'll reserve some time towards the end to, uh, for some of your questions, so just write down any questions you have throughout the call, and we'll take some time towards the end to get those questions answered. But it is my great privilege to welcome Craig. Welcome and take it away. A privilege, you say? Uh, it is always a privilege well, to know that. thank you. That's quite an introduction, James. Well, look, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, this is, a, I think, a very important call. Uh, I hope um, you get a lot out of it. I've been preparing for this, and I've got some great examples uh, to share with you uh, to help make the points that I want to make. So um, you should have uh, the screen in front of you now. It says uh, performance guarantees. And, Andrew, let's go to the first slide. The um, power with performance guarantees is the fact that the biggest uh, trend in the country today is skepticism. Uh, and it, it seems that every realtor is running around saying the same old things. Uh, they're telling buyers and sellers the same old stuff. They're going to get their home sold for the most amount of money. They're going to do the best job. Well, the easiest way, of course, to cut through that is to be accountable because nobody else wants, it seems, wants to be accountable. So when I started running my guaranteed sale program in the early 1990s here in Toronto, it was really, really powerful because we were in a slower market. The market had dramatically slowed down. The guaranteed sale program works absolutely the best in a slow market, okay, in a buyer's market, not a seller's market. When the market's really strong, sellers aren't concerned about their home not selling. Okay, so if you're in a slower market, which most of you are, the guaranteed sale program is truly a game changer. We've had realtors go through the conference that went back home and did one thing, and that one thing was the guaranteed sale program, and it totally revolutionized their business. Uh, Mary, Mariana Cowan, for example, comes to mind struggling Coldwell banker agent, comes to the super conference, uh, goes back home, and within six months has the commanding market share in Halifax and is named the top, uh, Keller, uh, the top uh, Coldwell banker agent in uh, the entire country, okay, doing one thing, but doing that one thing very well. So I'm going to give you some examples here of how I marketed uh, the guaranteed sale program. Here's a postcard um, that I sent out, and I would send out 20,000 of these every other week. Your home sold in 120 days, guaranteed, or I'll buy it myself. Um, very successful campaign, uh, this postcard campaign, and I did it for years and years and years and years. Why? Because it worked. And I would get phone calls into the office every single day with prospects saying, you know, how does this thing work? And I would say, well, it works very well. And they'd say, well, can't you just tell me, you know, what you'd buy my home for? To which I'd say, well, I can't possibly tell you what I'm going to buy your home for without having a, a look at it first, which, of course, made perfect sense to the prospects. And now I'm face-to-face -face with a seller that wants to sell their home, which is always a good thing if you're a real estate agent. This is the billboard I had uh, coming uh, into town. Okay, we're a bedroom community, so everybody coming into town and coming out of town on their way to work, on their way home from work, had to drive by this billboard. Your home sold in 120 days, or we'll buy it. This is Mariana Cowan now that I mentioned earlier. She comes through the super conference. She takes back home this one concept and totally dominates her marketplace. Your home sold in 120 days, guaranteed, or we'll buy it. Here's an ad in the local paper. This is a full-page ad. You'll notice there's a testimonial here. The biggest 
problem you're going to have with the guaranteed sale program is skepticism. People feel that it, you know, it sounds too good to be true. So you always want to back up every claim you make, not just the guaranteed sale program, but as marketers, you want to back up every claim that you make with proof, with testimonials. And they have to be specific testimonials. So this is a good one. It says, Craig actually bought someone else's house so they could buy ours. So I had their home listed and somebody wanted to move up and purchase their, their home. And, um, that qualified for the guaranteed sale program, right? They were moving up and buying one of my listings. So I gave the buyer a guarantee. I never had to buy that home, but I gave the buyer the guarantee so they had the confidence to move up and purchase my listing. Now I double ended this property and made almost $30,000. Here's another full page ad. Your home sold in under 120 days at a price acceptable to you, guaranteed, or I'll buy it myself. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but underneath each one of the property listings, it has the price and it says, or trade. Okay, so it might say 359.9 or trade. Again, a lot of calls coming into the office. People asking, well, what does that mean? Or trade. I, I like to trade up. Um, and really, if you think about this program, it's very similar to when you trade in your car. Right, you want to buy a new car, you drive your old car into the dealership and you trade it in. You move up to a newer car and they take your present car in trade. Well, that's what I'm doing here in real estate. Move up to any one of my listings. You can trade up. You can trade in your, your, prop, your uh, property for a newer, bigger property. Here's another ad. Uh, now, you'll notice that um, on all of my campaigns, I try to make it really easy for the prospect to contact me or rather not contact me. You'll notice that I'm offering a free special report here. Okay, my guaranteed sale program solves this problem of getting stuck owning two homes or none at all. And then I'm offering a free special report on how the guaranteed sale program works and how people can benefit from it. So it's very important that you make it easy and non-threatening for prospects to get the information. So will some people just pick up the phone and call you and ask, how does it work? Yeah, some of them will, but many of them won't. I just want to share with everybody that you've got to make it non-threatening. That's why I'm offering the free report. You can see they can get more information by visiting craigproctor.com, okay, or they can call into the hotline and they can get they can request a free report on how it works, or they can call me. So they've got three different ways that they can raise their hand and get more information on the Guaranteed Sale Program. And the testimonials, I don't know if you can read them, but they're really good. Um, you know, at first, the bottom one says, I think at first we, we thought this was a gimmick, but through Craig's Guaranteed Sale Program, we we're, we're able to get the home of our dreams. So as soon as you have... Um, clients that take advantage of this program. It doesn't mean you bought their home. It just means you gave them a guarantee so they can move up and buy someone, out, uh, someone else's home. Uh, they'll give you a good testimonial and you want to use it okay, to support your claim here. Now, sometimes I'd restate the guaranteed sale program instead of your home sold or, sold or I'll buy it. I would restate that offer. Move up to any one of my listings and I'll buy your home for cash. And you'll see that I have a sign rider. This sign rider goes on top of all of my listings. They cost me about $15. And this little sign rider totally transformed my normal, ordinary, boring for sale sign into a huge lead generator. Remember, when you've got a for sale sign in front of a specific property, it's a very narrow offer. Right, because the only people that would inquire are people that would be interested in that particular home. Well, no longer was that the case. Not, you know, I was getting buyers contacting me on the house, not many of them, but I was getting a ton of, of prospects contacting me about the program. Okay, the guaranteed sale program has universal appeal. 
Okay, every move up buyer is interested in that program, but not every buyer is interested in my one specific listing. So I had about 40 or 50 listings around town, all with this sign router on. Buy this home from me and I'll buy your home for cash. So the calls coming into the office again were not about this specific property. The calls coming into the office were about how does the program work? Here's another full page ad, and you can see I've changed the headline. Now, this is a great headline, by the way, to run on top of a page of your listings, right? It makes sense. Move up to any one of my listings, and here they are on this page. Move up to any one of my listings, and I'll buy your home for cash. So a picture of the for sale sign with the sign rider, then uh, whatever I've got there, 20 listings, and each listing has the, the headline is the price and or trade. Okay, again, more people are contacting me because of the program than the listings. Okay, the program is the universal offer. Most real estate agents advertise something that has narrow appeal. They're listings. Why do we do it? Because everybody else does it. So it seems like it's the thing to do. Here's Todd Walters who uh, many of you know is our platinum coach. Uh, Todd used to work for Remax. He was one of the top 10 Remax agents in the United States. And you can see he, would, he was smart enough just to take my ads and run them verbatim, not change a thing. So we looked at my version a couple slides ago. Well, here's Todd's um, knockoff. Move up to any one of my listings, and I'll buy your home for cash. He's offering that same free report says, don't get stuck owning two homes. It's the exact same copy. And guess what? That's what I encourage all of you to do. If you can copy, you can succeed. You don't have to have a creative bone in your body. Just knock this off. It works. So let's go through the rules and the guidelines. Because all of you should be doing this. I really believe that. But you've got to believe that. And I know you get kind of freaked out by this program. It's, it's natural, but when you really understand how this works, it is a no-brainer. It really is a no-brainer. First of all, remember, you control the rules. You control the guidelines. They can look any way you want. It's your program. If the prospect doesn't like your rules, then you can always list their home the traditional way. So not everybody's going to get the guarantee. If you use this program properly, you will make a ton of money. But I want to explain my rules to you. So once you understand how I did it, you can create your own rules that you feel comfortable with. So let's look at rule number one. No one-ended guarantees. People wanting the guarantee plan must move up and purchase one of my listings. Now, think, do the math right there. Let's say somebody in your marketplace with a $200,000 house moves up and they buy a $400,000 house. You're going to make like $25,000, $26,000 in commission. Plus, because you're mandating that the buyer must move up and buy directly through you, not use their friend or relative that's a real estate agent, they have to use you, you're compelling buyers that would normally not use you to do so. So I think you would agree most buyers have a friend, a relative, they know somebody in the real estate business. All things equal, if you didn't have this program, all things equal, they're just going to use their friend. They're going to use their relative. So when I would get calls about the program into the office, I would explain this to me. You, you have to use me. Now, what you'll find is people all listen to the same radio station, right? WIFM. So, you know, they were going to use Uncle Joe or their friend, but now that you're giving them an offer, a benefit that they can't get anywhere else, guess what? They quickly forget about their friend. Sorry. That's the way it is. There's no loyalty out there, but they quickly forget about their friend, and now they're going to deal directly with you, which is good because you're going to double-end a whole bunch of your listings. 
and that's what I did every single year. I would double end 30 to 35 percent of my listings, which is huge. If you look at the industry average, it's like less than eight percent. Okay, so the best way to get along with the other agent is when you are the other agent. There's no personality conflicts that way. So uh, I would hog the commission in a, a third of the cases. Okay, they had to buy through me. So I was making an offer in my community that caused people, forced people really in a way, in an ethical way, to deal with me instead of their friend or their relative. Now do the math again. I don't know what your average price range is, and I, I hear this sometimes. Well, Craig, you know, my average price range is a million dollars. Great. This will even work better because you'll even make more money. You'll, you'll even make more money. The higher the price range, the harder it is typically for uh, uh, homes to sell, the bigger benefit this program is. So, look, I know that old paradigm sometimes uh, grabs onto you and pulls you back, and you may be immediately thinking about all of the reasons why you can't do this. Resist that urge. Okay, Resist the urge to focus on why you can't do this. Instead, focus on why you can. You're going to double end your listings. You're going to make twenty five, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars every time you sell a home. Now, before I go further, consider this. If worse come to worse and you had to buy in this example the two hundred thousand dollar home, you've already got the down payment. Right? On closing, after a hundred and twenty days, if the house didn't sell for more money to an outside buyer, you're already covered. You don't need any money to do this program. All you need to do is have access to money. Uh, what I'd recommend is you have a line of credit. That's what I have. I had a line of credit. I could access it any time. But I always, always knew I'd have the down payment. Okay, let's look at rule number two. And we will open it up for, for questions here shortly because I know you're going to have lots of them. And uh, there's a bunch of ways you can ask your questions, of course, by telephone. You can type them into the chat. You can use your uh, microphone on your computer. We'll take all those questions shortly. Uh, so just type them in. Uh, rule number two, no guarantee outside of your market area. Okay, you and I are experts in our area. I only ended up buying two properties in 22 years because I was stupid. I didn't even follow my own rules. Okay, I bought, I guaranteed homes outside of my market area. Well, I was really stupid because in, on one of them, I didn't even look at that property. Okay, uh, that's a rule in itself. You should always look at a house before you agree to buy it. So I think I kind of uh, deserve that one. So you're going to decide which area, which communities, which neighborhoods you're willing to make guarantees on. Okay, it's okay to have rules. Every offer in the world has conditions. Rule number three, the guarantee price, my rule was 5% less than estimated value of the property. Of course you and I are not going to guarantee 100% of market value. I would explain it to prospects this way. The seller says, oh, you're only going to guarantee it for 95%. Well, hey, if I guaranteed 100% of market value, no one in my town would even try to sell their home. Just call Craig. He'll come over and buy it. You want to explain the guaranteed sale program this way. It's an insurance policy that you and I are offering our prospects that nobody else is. Okay, it's an insurance policy that you're offering prospects that nobody else is. You're guaranteeing that they won't get stuck owning two homes. And if they get a better offer, a superior offer from an outside buyer during that 120 days, they always get the benefit of the highest offer because you and I really don't want to buy their home. And if I have to go further, analogy I would use with them is, you know, when you buy insurance on your car, if you smash your car up, they're probably not going to give you 100% of what you paid for it when the car was new. You might get, you know, 90% or 80%. Well, we're giving you 95% 
of market value. If you don't feel comfortable with that, guarantee 90%. Take off 10%. Remember, it's your program, not my program, your program. Rule number four, the closing date on the purchased property must be 120 days from the time the guarantee is issued. So if I've got a buyer here wants to move up and buy one of my listings, the closing date, the possession date, must be at least 120 days. It can be longer, but it can be no less than 120 days. Now, keep in mind, every once in a while, when I would bring the firm offer, because it's a firm offer now, remember, the buyer is a home to sell, but I'm guaranteeing the sale of their home, so that buyer now can move up and buy my $400,000 home, make a firm offer, an unconditional offer. Sometimes the guy that owns the $400,000 house would say, well, look, it, I, I like the price. I like the fact that it's a firm cash offer, but I don't like the 120-day closing. You know, I want, to I want possession date in 60 days, to which I would say, well, I can bring you an offer with a 60-day possession, but it would have to be conditional. Well, guess what? The seller wants the firm offer more than he wants the quick closing. So you've got leverage with your sellers to accept the closing date because it's a firm cash offer. Next slide, please. Is this making sense to everybody? This is a no-brainer. You, you are offering something that nobody else is going to have the courage to offer. Okay, no urban properties with a market value of over half a million. Like in my marketplace, a half a million was a high price. So if you're, if the average price in your marketplace is a million bucks, then it, your number should be a million bucks. Okay, the point I want to make here is you only want to guarantee the average house. Because the average house is the house that sells easily and quickly. So I didn't want to guarantee million-dollar properties in my marketplace because there's not many of them, and it takes they're difficult to sell. Same as rule number six. No country or rural properties with a value of over $300,000 will be considered. Why do I not go as high on price on rural properties? Because they're harder to evaluate, and they take longer to sell. So I didn't go as high. So you're, these, these are examples of conditions, rules, that you're going to create for yourself and your team members. Uh, okay, speaking of team members, let's go to rule number seven. If the, if the property is purchased under the guaranteed sale plan, all the reps involved in the string of sales will share proportionally in financial loss. So if um, it's one of my outside sales agents that's involved in this transaction, you know, it's not like I'm going to guarantee uh, the sale of the home and if I have to take uh, possession of the home, take a loss, well, one of my agents makes $10,000. No, no, no. If, um, you know, I got stuck owning a property and there was a loss of $10,000, then the outside sales agent, my team member that was involved in this transaction, would also be involved in any loss, okay? If they're going to share in the win, they've got to be willing to share in the loss. Rule number eight, do not discuss the guaranteed sale price with your clients. If you've got team members, the last thing you want is your team members running around saying, oh, well, you know, um, we'll guarantee your house for this or that. No, no, no. The only person that gives the guarantee is you, the team leader. And that guarantee, of course, is given in writing. The guarantee price absolutely should not be discussed with any outside sales agent. So, you know, if I guaranteed um, a house at a certain price and that, you know, word got out to other agents in town that my guaranteed sale price was X amount, it would probably kill the seller's chance of ever getting a superior offer. So uh, we have to keep the price, the guaranteed sale price, very confidential. Here's one of the clauses that I inserted in the in the guaranteed sale uh, agreement. It is agreement. It's a contract between me and the seller. It says, during the first 60 days from acceptance of this agreement, the seller reserves the right to decline any offer from a third party to purchase this property. However, after the 60th day from acceptance, the seller must accept any offer 
that is equal to or better than the purchase price contained in this agreement. So in the first 60 days, the seller, it's their prerogative. They can blow off any offer, even if it's superior. I don't know why they would do it, but they can. But in the last 60 days of the guarantee, I can accept any offer on their behalf and pay them out the guarantee. So I could accept an offer that's less than the guarantee amount and make up the difference. Okay, I've got that prerogative. Sometimes it may be um, a situation where I might I might um, forego my commission to get a deal accepted because I'm making forty or fifty thousand dollars on the other end. The uh, guaranteed sale agreement always every one of them had built-in price reductions. How would you like all of your listings to have built-in price reductions mandated right into the agreement? Every thirty days, the price goes down. So if the guaranteed sale uh, price was, I don't know, 429 we might start off, you know, at uh, 449 439 We're going to bring it down, bring it down uh, until we get, you know, in the last 30 days, the list price is going to match the guaranteed sale price. We're going to be really, really aggressive because we want to get offers. And if you play this right, that's how you never get stuck owning a home because you're super aggressive with pricing. And believe me, you've got all the leverage here. The seller wants your guarantee more than you want to give it. And uh, this is the statement, again, that made me millions of dollars in my 22-year real estate career. People calling into the office saying, Craig, can you tell me how this you'll buy my home program thing works? That's pretty much what they would say. And the answer was, very well. When can I look at it? Well, can't you just tell me what, you know, over the, how can I tell you what it's, I'm going to buy your home for without a chance to look at it? Makes perfect sense. Gets you, it does what we want, right? It's marketing that causes the people in your town that want to sell to call you, and then you know how to get in front of them. It gives you the ultimate excuse or reason to get face-to-face -face with these people that want to sell. It really is perfect. Okay, your message that's compelling, it's shocking. It, and who do you think responds to this, by the way? The most motivated sellers, the people that are super motivated, they want to get their homes sold like yesterday. Another great headline that I, I ran now that worked very well to get totally desperate sellers to contact me was the headline that said this, guaranteed cash offer for your home in 24 hours. Okay, guaranteed cash offer for your home in 24 hours. Who do you think responds to that? People that are super motivated, need to sell their home yesterday. And I kind of like those sellers. Okay, a lot of you have this problem. You have sellers that aren't that motivated. You ever feel this way, that you're more motivated to sell their home than they are? That's a problem. Okay, so um, we're going to take a few questions bef before we move further. But what we're going to go on to next is we're going to go on to alternative performance guarantees for sellers. And then we're going to look at some for buyers. So let's go over to our operator, Andrea. And Andrea, do we have any questions at this point? We do have a Q&A chat question. It's from Ron Tanger. What are the best guarantees for seller markets? Okay. Uh, so you may want a performance guarantee for buyers. And um, there are still lots of markets in the U.S. that are slow markets, uh, although there are some that aren't. So that's why we're going to cover all of this here today. But uh, you make a good point. If you're in a seller market, if you're in Phoenix, for example, and there's an extreme shortage of inventory, the guaranteed sale program is not going to work that well because nobody, no seller is concerned about their house not selling. So um, you're going to um, um, be more interested in some of the other performance guarantees that we're going to talk about. Let me give you a quick example. You could focus on buyers because there's lots of buyers, right? You're either in, a, in a, a seller's market or a buyer's market. Okay, uh, over the last couple of years, 
most of us have been in a strong buyer's market, okay, where the buyer is king. Now, if you're in Phoenix, for example, the seller is king. So you might want to um, target buyers with some of those USPs. For example, um, um, $5,000 savings guaranteed works well for buyers or the guaranteed sale program flipped around. And I'm going to show you how to flip the guaranteed sale program around to point it at buyers. Okay, basically how that's going to work is you're going to guarantee buyers that if they purchase a home using your services, that if they're not happy with that home at any time, you'll either sell it free or you'll buy it back. Now, of course, there are conditions. You're not buying it back. It's not based on what they paid for it. And they have to move up and buy one of your listings. So they don't like the house that they purchase. They can trade up and buy one of your homes. What's that sound like? It's the guaranteed sale program. That's all. But flipped around for buyers. So we will cover that. That's one of the things uh, we've got coming up here. So stay tuned. We have Mike Quayle with his hand raised. Mike, your line is open. Hey there. Can you guys hear me? Hey, Mike. Hi. Um, question is um, on just the technical details of financing it. So let's say uh, you were listing a $300,000 property. You got a 7% commission. So you have 21000 set aside for cash. You uh, um, sell their house, and let's say you get 4 4.5% um, on a $200,000 sale. Let's call it nine grand. So those two commissions, you have thirty grand, and you have to buy this two hundred thousand dollar house. Uh, typically, you need twenty five percent to get investment financing here, at least in the U.S. Um, just technically. Okay, but what, what about a line of credit? Can you get a line of credit? No. Okay, I had a line of credit on my house, so I could use it any way I wanted. Right? I could go out and buy furniture with it. I could buy a uh, a Porsche, I could go use that line of credit, and that's why I like the line of credit idea. Now, um, so I hear you. You might need to have a, a bigger down payment. So what that means is if you need a bigger down payment, you're going to have to have some cash on hand in a special account just in case. Okay. Because it, what you're saying is, Craig, um, if I do the math on this, if I add up both of the commissions I'm going to get, I still have a shortfall. I'm not going to have the down So you would need to have some money in a special account. You always want to, you know, here's the problem. You know, Mike, we can't say at the end of 120 days, hey, I was just kidding. I don't really have the money. Right. That's the right? So we got it. We, yeah. We, okay. Now, you got a couple other uh, options here, too. Uh, what some of our members do is they have investors lined up. Okay. Right? You have an investor friends. Uh, I have a lot of investors. That you, right. So. You say, uh, you say to your investor, your buddy Joe, you say, look, um, I've got the guaranteed sale program and there's an off chance that I might be able, that I might get stuck with one of these homes, but I'm guaranteeing 90% of market value. Then I'm taking my commission off. So you might be able to buy, um, you know, these properties for, you know, 15 or 20% under market value. Would that interest you? Yeah, of course. And if you're, uh, especially if you're in a, a seller's market, those investors are lined up. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, the way I did it was I did it with the line of credit. But you, uh, you know, plan number two is you're going to have a, a little reserve fund, an emergency fund in case you need it for the downstroke. And the third option is you have investors that are waiting in line, ready to buy these properties. I have plenty of invest investors. So on on that, how do I get it so they can use that commission towards the purchase price? That the part like do a partnership on them when we buy it, so I can use the commission towards the down payment. Uh, okay, come again with that question. So let's say the the best way for me to run this would be with an investor. So okay. the thirty grand of commission I have from both sales, how do I get that money to my investor? If the do some sort of partnership with him on the closing? Well, no. Uh, what you could do is this. After the agreement is accepted, you could do an amendment lowering uh, the price by removing your commission. Uh, perfect. That's how the investor is going to benefit, right? Perfect. Okay. If great. you're supposed to get $20,000, yep. right, you could, uh, after, after you, you wait for the deal to, it's all firm, conditions are removed, but before closing, 
You do an amendment, reducing, uh, you know, removing your twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, but but dropping the price twenty grand. That's how the investor is is going to benefit from this. Perfect. And it would just be from the original um, listing side or the the, the buyer's house um, or both commissions. Well, you could be aggressive and do it on both ends. Yeah. Um, right. Like the the okay. Let's let's take somebody. Let me let me uh, try explain it here. Uh, let's just do uh, this for easy math. Uh, you got a guy with a two hundred thousand dollar house. He's moving up to a four hundred thousand dollar house. Yep. Okay. So you'd be paid, let's say, twenty five thousand bucks there. Yep. Okay. Just for round numbers. Okay. Yep. Now, uh, for whatever reason, you get in trouble, and the, uh, this two hundred thousand dollar house, by the way, you've been guaranteed it at two hundred. It's worth two hundred, but you your buyout on it is one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Okay. First of all, the, the first thing that has to happen, Mike, is in your marketplace, you're aggressively marketing this thing for one hundred and twenty days. The house is really worth two hundred, right? You're the guy that put the price on it. The market value was two hundred, but you're only guaranteeing it for one eighty. What are the chances in one hundred and twenty days? That you don't get a superior offer, an offer over 180. If the house is really worth 200,000, uh, very low, very low, very, 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 very low. All I'm saying is it only happened to me twice in 22 years. Yeah, just overpriced okay, it. But, uh, but you know, we we have to we have to be smart about this, and we have to have the you know just in case plan. Right. And that's what you're saying. Okay, so now. You've got this investor. So let's say you're thinking, holy crap, this thing didn't sell. What am I going to do, right? Because that's what you'd be thinking. Right. Okay. So you've got an investor on the sidelines. His name is Joe. Okay. Now, you need to get out of this. At this point, you might be thinking, uh, I'm even willing to take no money on this thing just to get out of it because I don't want to own this property. Think of how much of a deal you could get your buddy Joe. Because you could forgo the twenty-five thousand dollar double end commission on the four hundred grand, you do an amendment there, right? You drop the price twenty-five grand, so your buyer now uh, has his price uh, drop twenty-five grand, okay? And you can take that right off of the hundred eighty thousand, right? So that, that's uh, how that it... price goes down to one sixty-five, right? Okay. Yep. Now your buddy Joe is going to jump all over that. That's excellent. That's great. Okay. That's great. Thanks, Look, Greg. the way I looked at this is I was uh, – honestly, I was always hoping they wouldn't sell. <laughs> you know, I, I, I aggressively priced these things. And, you see, this is the leverage you're going to have too, right? If the guy, like, when you go to see somebody, the argument or the, you know, the, the challenge we have with every seller is getting them to price it right. Correct. So let's say we don't use the guaranteed sale program. Um, and you and I are real estate partners, so we go over to this guy's house, and we've done our research. We, we know that the house is worth – it's really worth 200000 But the seller says, well, you know, um, I, I hear – Mike, Craig, I hear you, but I, I want two ten. I talked to another agent yesterday. He told me two ten, uh, so I think it's worth two ten. You and I have leverage with this guy. We can say, well, look, at, we can list it at two ten. Just like everybody else, like we can overprice your house and stick it for sale sign, but you're not going to get the guarantee. Well, the guy wants the guarantee more than you and I want to give it. So we say, well, to get the guarantee, we're prepared to give you the guarantee based on market value of 200000 Now, if he fights us on this, guess what? We just list the house at 210 Yeah. But even that's not that bad, right? Because this guy never would have called you and I. Had we not run the guaranteed program ad? Right. So worst case, even if they don't take advantage of the guaranteed sale program, you and I are face-to-face -face with some guy that wants to sell his home, and hopefully we get the listing. It's an opportunity. Right. But we've got leverage over that other agent he spoke to, because the other agent just says, well, I'm going to list your house at 210. We're saying, if you list it at 200, we'll guarantee the damn thing will sell. But, you know, and how about this? You explain to the seller that our guarantee based on 200 is an insurance, it's, it's an ins our insurance guarantee. We're going to aggressively market your home for 120 days. It might sell for 210. We don't want to buy your house. But worst case, if it doesn't sell, you know you're covered at 200 grand. And if, and it enables now that buyer to move up and make a firm offer on the house they really like. See, that's where it really 
you've really got leverage is if you've got a buyer that kind of likes one of your listings, fear of loss, right? They don't want to lose the listing to someone right. else. Uh, it, and, and um, you know, they know that uh, many sellers won't even accept an offer condition on the sale of the home. So th that's why I wanted to do this webinar here and, and have these conversations because this, if, if, if I could spend a whole day with you guys and just lay it out on paper, this is a no-brainer. Like the only way you can screw this up is if you totally don't know what's going on in your market. Which, I, again, is the two, the two times in 22 years I got stuck. Uh, I, I guaranteed homes outside of my market. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, one of the cases, Mike, I didn't even look at the house. I took the, I took, I took the word of one of my buyer agents. Right. And this buyer was not even moving up and buying one of my listings. They bought a home through us, but not one of our listings. So I did everything wrong. That yeah, means I, I deserved, I deserved to get spanked, and I did. Yeah, and I actually, I just moved up to Platinum last week, so I was listening to some stuff, and I heard Todd say something about, you know, if you're unsure about the price sitting there at the table, you know, about the guarantee, you can say, I have to run this by my underwriter and bring it back to your office and run it by somebody yeah, else. Good point. Here's what I would do. If I was unsure on the price, what I would do is, and they don't know how it works, right? It's right. Like whatever you tell them, that's how it works. So I would say to them uh, something like that. I'd say, hey, Mike, uh, look, um, I checked at your house, but the way it works now is I'd like to bring in three of my team members tomorrow. So now I have three of my team members. I don't share my opinion with my three team members. They all walk through. Uh, you know, they write down on a, uh, a notepad their their price. Well, there's me and three of my – all four of us. You know, we can't be that wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yes, that's absolutely smart. If you're unsure, have a buddy system. Have a couple of uh, uh, fellow agents go over and give you their opinion. Like, what's the chances of three or four people in your office or on your team being way up to lunch on price? Right. So when you give and them that's that, not, that's not new. To, that's not yeah. new to real estate. We've done that for a long, long time. Yeah. But the difference is, mm -hmm. is now you've got coverage. You've got something that the seller wants so badly that they actually might listen to you when it comes to price. You know, many times they'd say, "Well, look at the other agent, Craig, uh, that we talked to, is telling us, you know, ten grand more." To which I'd say, "Are they going to buy your home if it doesn't sell?" Right, and you have the sellers sometimes. That sometimes well, sometimes they would say, well, look, at, um, the other agent we interviewed said, you know, your, your guarantee program, it's just a scam, and you're just going to underprice our home. I said, hey, what? I'm going to leave you a copy of the guaranteed sale program with my price in here. Take it to the other agent and see if they'll sign it. That's you know, great if it's line. a ripoff, it's a scam, go, go get them to do it. See if they'll sign it. And, of course, they never would because they were terrified of the program. That's what I love about the Guaranteed Sale Program. You know how it freaks out everyone here on this webinar? That's what's great about it. Your competitors are unlikely going to copy it because they don't understand the inner workings. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. Offering something they're terrified that really works for you, but your competitors are terrified of trying to match it. Yeah, I love the way you laid out that investor way because I, I – you know, I knew my investors would buy, but they normally need to buy at about 70%. And I thought, if I'm offering 70% of the guarantee, the seller is going to say, oh, it's a, you know, that's kind of a crappy program. And I could sell it to anyone for, you know, 30%. Right. So all you do is you take the, you take the commission yep. uh, that you would have got, and you discount the price all the way down the chain so uh, the, the investor is going to benefit. And, of course, now, you know, some people on our webinar might say, well, hey, now Mike's not getting paid anything. Yeah, but at least you're getting out of a jam. Yeah. Right. That's all you know. It's, it's just a safety. Right. Plan. It's for, it's an emergency plan in case this thing doesn't sell. But you know, uh, I would recommend that you uh, you what you strive for is three layers of safety. Three layers of safety. So you eventually get yourself a line of credit because I love a line of credit because you can just use it whenever you want, like that. You know, yeah. I had a line of credit, uh, and, and believe me, my wife was none too happy when I did that. Okay, I mean, I had to sell yeah. her on that. Like, uh, uh, okay, honey, uh, here's what I'm going to do. Um, you know how we've worked hard to pay our house off? Well, now I'm going to put a line of credit for the whole works, and I'm going to start guaranteeing the sale of people's homes. Okay, but, it, you know, she, un I, she understood how this works. So this was our first insurance plan. 
Number two is, if you can't do that, have some money in a bank account. Okay, to shore up the deposit. The commission uh, is not going to add up to what you need, 25 or 30 percent of your, you know, the downstroke. So you have a bit of money put away in a special reserve account. Okay, and number three, you've got some investors. So lots of different ways to make sure that you don't, you don't get into trouble with this. All right, Mike, I hope that helps. Yes, great. Thank you, Greg. We have a question from Candy Tovar. Um, if you do end up buying a property, do you still charge the commission as a cost of sale? Yes, the commission. Well, they don't pay a commission. The commission is deducted. So uh, if I, I guarantee the home for $200,000, Okay, and I'm guaranteeing 95% of my market value. Then my guarantee is 190. Then I'm going to take off my commission. So the net price is $180,000. That is what is in the contract to the seller. Is net price. It's a net guarantee. Now I have 120 days to net the seller over 180. I can do it, in, but I got 120 days to net that seller over 180 grand or I get stuck buying the house. Okay, our next question comes from Mark Skelpza. It's two parts. Does this offer work well in a postcard, and what if he doesn't have any listings? <laughs> well, if you don't have any listings, uh, that's the best time to do it because uh, they can't ever move up to one of your listings because you don't have any. Uh, it's a little bit of a joke, but I know a lot of our members have done exactly that. Um, you know, you know, <laughs> Move up to any one of my listings, and I'll buy your home for cash, and they get calls on it, and people say, well, what listings do you have? Well, we're, we're sold out right now, but, you know, what are you interested in? It's, it's just a – it's a great lead generator. Uh, now, here's the thing. If you don't have a lot of listings right now or you don't have any listings, problem solved, right? As soon as you start to offer this program, you're going to get listings. That's the reason we're offering the guaranteed sale program in the first place. People that want to sell their home to contact you. Because right now, they might not be. Right now, all things equal, they're going to use Uncle Joe. They're going to use their buddy that's in real estate. We have to communicate a very compelling offer to prospects. So not only will they contact us, but they, they're compelled to do business with us, even though their best friend is a real estate agent. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and then... Um, We'll take some more questions as we proceed. So as we proceed, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box. Uh, or uh, we'll take some audio questions here shortly. Okay, so the Guaranteed Sale Program completely freaks you out, even though I've tried my best here today to convince everybody it's something they should definitely consider. Whatever, you're not going to do it. It's important, though, you have some kind of performance guarantee. Because you do want to separate yourself from all these lackluster agents that run around making promises. And as I mentioned, the easiest way to do that is by being accountable. So how about this one? Your home sold in under 60 days or 80 days or you know whatever time period you feel comfortable with. Your home sold in X amount of time guaranteed or I'll pay you $1,000 cash. Now, how do you decide the time period? Well, take a look at your MLS. What's the average days in market? Or take a look at your days on the market. And then add a buffer. If the average days in the market is 30, 60 is good. If the average days in the market are 70 days, then you might want to go with 90 or 120. Yeah, this is what the ad looks like. Full page ad. Your home sold in 60 days or less at your price, or we pay you $1,000 cash. Now, that $1,000 cash is never really like paid to them. It's deducted only when the property sells. If we can go to the next slide, I think we have this certificate. And this certificate you can get off of the coaching site. Okay? It's all spelled. You, you need to have the seller sign the certificate so they don't come back to you later uh, with some misunderstanding of how this program works. So here's the deal. Um, they have to list their home with me for 120 days. Okay? If um, I don't get them an offer within 60 days. When the house does sell, I promise to deduct $1,000 off my commission. So 
please understand, you're never just stroking a check for a thousand bucks. You're only agreeing to reduce your commission by a thousand dollars if and when it does sell. If the house doesn't sell, then obviously you can't reduce your commission because there's no commission to reduce. And again, what's the purpose of us running this campaign is to get sellers that wouldn't normally call us to do so. So what's your worst case on this? Some guy that was never going to call you responds to this ad, even if you mess up and you don't sell their home in 60 days, but it sells in 80 days, you get your full commission, maybe 10 grand minus $1,000. So you made nine grand. So here's your choice. You could not run the program and make nothing because this person would have never called you, or you run this program, somebody calls you, worst case, even if you screw up and you don't sell their home within 60 days, you make 9000 instead of ten. but would you rather make $9,000 or nothing? So worst case, you make your full commission minus 1000 bucks, Or don't do it at all, and that person doesn't call you in the first place. Your home sold in under 60 days, guaranteed, or I'll sell it for free. Very pretty ad. Your biggest benefit should always be in your headline. Your home sold in 60 days, guaranteed, or I'll sell it for free. Most of you are using this program. Your home sold in 60 days, or it will expire. All right, let's have a look at that certificate, Andrea. Okay, so they got to list their house for 120 days. I've got 60 days to sell it at the price I promise or more. So I'm going to give them a price. I will sell your house at X amount of time, and I guarantee you, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, guarantee you I will get you an offer on 60 days if you take my advice on price. Well, they might say, well, we don't want to take your advice on price. We, we want to list our house higher. Well, then you don't get the guarantee. Remember, they want the guarantee more than you and I want to give it. So. It's this guarantee that gives you and I the leverage we need to get the price right, which is always the tough part, getting them to price right. If they actually would listen to us, what happens? Their house sells, and that's exactly what happens. If they take my advice on price, and that's the only way I'm giving this guarantee is you've got to, you know, you, you might think your house is worth 10 or 220. I will guarantee you, if you're listed at 200, I'll get you an offer in 60 days. If that doesn't happen, I will list your house for, I will continue to market your home for an additional 60 days and not take a listing commission. They're responsible for the buy end, the buyer, the buyer agent commission, but I'll take no listing commission. Okay, so worst case, I still don't lose any money. But I'm very confident if they take my advice on price, I'll get it in 60 days. Uh, here's one of our members in um, Sarasota, Florida, Adam Robinson, your home guaranteed sold in 88 days or I'll sell it for free. I guarantee to have a contract. See, it doesn't have to be an accepted contract. I guarantee to have a contract. Or sorry, uh, you could say offer or contract on your home in less than 88 days or I'll sell it without charging you any listing commission. You only pay the actual cost for advertising and or cooperating broker. All right, next. You can use performance guarantees to help you win the listing in the first place. So you're out on a listing appointment, you're the last agent in, and the seller box at listing with you, you're going to use this cancellation guarantee that you see on the screen. Okay, you're going to explain to the seller that if they list with you, uh, they're not mess up. The only reason the seller is interviewing realtors in the first place is because they don't want to make a mistake. So you can use a performance guarantee like this to win the listing in the first place. If you list with me, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're guaranteed not to make a mistake. I mean, you can get out of it at any time. I can't be one of these realtors that just, you know, comes into your home and makes all kinds of promises. I can't just sound good today to get your business. I have to do a job every day to keep your business. We know that sellers don't like risk. So, this helps the seller make the right decision to list their home with you. And, of course, you can get this right off the coaching site. Now, in the listing presentation, 
I used uh, six satisfaction guarantees. Now, imagine if you were up against me. Okay, so the seller's interviewing me, the seller's interviewing you. This is part of my presentation. I'm going to offer the seller a communication guarantee. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I guarantee that we're going to follow up with you on a weekly basis. And if we fail to do that, if we fail to update you on a weekly basis, or we fail to return your call within 24 hours, I'll deduct $200 from the commission of your home when it is sold. Okay, again, a reduction in commission. But I know in my office we do call them every week to give them an update. And we would return the call of a seller within 24 hours. Here's our honest promises guarantee. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I guarantee if at any time we fail to honor our professional service agreement, we'll pay you a $500 penalty on closing. So I'm sure in your listing presentation, you have a list of services that you're going to provide, a list of things you're going to do. You know, we're going to stick the for sale sign on your property. We're going to advertise in the paper. We're going to, um, you know, put it on our website. We're going to send out flyers. We're going to open houses, whatever it is. So we have a list, um, whatever it is, 15 things, 20 things that uh, we're going to do. And, you know, if you find that we don't do any of the things we promised you, we'll pay you 500 bucks on closing. Okay, number three, reality-based selling price range. Here's a big problem we have, right? We're up against other realtors that price. How do you battle that? Well, I explained to the seller that's the problem. You know, even if you had other agents, some of them tell you uh, an unrealistic price. Well, I believe in telling you the truth. So I'm going to guarantee my price. Um, for every $5,000 we sell your home for below my recommended list price, I will pay you up to $500 to a maximum of $1,000 on closing. And I'll also buy your home for a pre-agreed price at any time you should like. Number four. Now remember, there's six of these. Number four, reality-based timetable. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I guarantee if we fail to present you an offer on your home, within 29 days, I'll deduct 100 bucks from our commission for each week after that to a maximum of 1000 bucks. And remember, I'll also buy your home at any time. All right, we've got two more. Number five, honest presentation of experience and track record. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you've interviewed a couple of other realtors. You know, in uh, our business, sometimes real estate agents exaggerate their experience. They exaggerate their track record. Well, I guarantee you that my guarantee is if, if you can demonstrate that anything that I talked about, any of the statements, statistics, facts, facts summarized in my uh, brochure, in my presentation is false, I will donate $5,000 to the charity of your choice. Then our final guarantee, number six, number six is our qualified buyer's guarantee. We guarantee if we ever show your home to a buyer who later tells us that they can't afford your home, we'll pay you 500 bucks on closing. How can we make this guarantee? Because we actually meet with the buyers, sign the buyers to an agency agreement. We're representing them. Okay, and... They're pre-qualified. We're not just dragging anybody and everybody through your home. Okay, so that's part of my listing presentation. This is how I use performance guarantees to not only get buyers and sellers to call me, but to win the business at the listing presentation. Okay, $5,000 savings on your home purchase guaranteed. Pretty simple or a thousand or whatever it is. Now, if you're selling million dollar homes, think about it. A five thousand dollar savings, that's not going to cut it. So in a million dollar home, you might have to guarantee ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollar savings, or we'll pay you two thousand bucks. And you'll find this certificate on the coaching website. All you have to do is knock it off. Okay, we got one more. And it's the ultimate for buyers. It's the guaranteed sale program flipped around to benefit buyers. So earlier we had uh, someone say, well, look, um, you know, I'm in a strong, 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 strong seller's market. Well, um, how about this? You offer buyers a satisfaction guarantee. 
that if they um, work with you, they buy a property, any property, using your services, that if they're not happy for any reason at all, within 18 months, you'll sell it for free or you'll actually buy it back. Now, what are the conditions? They have to buy their next home through you. So you don't like that home. Well, we're going to take you out. We're going to sell you another home. But that other home has to be one of my listings. It's just the guaranteed sale program twisted around to target buyers instead of sellers. So you're getting buyers in this case that normally otherwise wouldn't have contacted you to do so. Okay, same deal. So that's how, to answer your question earlier, you take the guaranteed sale program and you flip it around, and this time you point it at buyers. Same program, same conditions. Okay, if, uh, if the buyer wants you to buy the home, they have to move up and they have to buy one of your listings. Uh, you're going to guarantee whatever it is, 90% of market value. Your commission is going to go off of that, 120 days. You're going to double in one of your listings, make whatever, $25,000, $50,000. You can use that as a downstroke. Same deal. Okay, let's take some uh, more questions. So uh, you can type in your questions into the chat. You can uh, ask your questions verbally using the telephone. Or if you've got a microphone on your computer, we can take them that way. That is correct. So go ahead and do that now. Our first guest, we have Bob Zachmeyer. Your mic is open. Hey, Craig. It's Bob Zachmeyer. Hey, Bob. Um, you've made a lot of money doing this. I did, actually. Um, this was what you know, hooked me at your very first conference back in 2005, and I wanted to leave after the first day and go home and start doing it. And actually in 2007, uh, it was before we really propelled, you know, our, our sales into the stratosphere, um, we sold 80 homes that year. Eleven of them came directly from this guaranteed sale program, and it accounted for 42% of our profit that year. Eleven out of 80 sales, which is you know, one of eight, accounted for 42% of the, of the profit. So one concept, almost half of your profits. Correct. Now, uh, Bob, you're also a coach. You help us. Uh, you do an excellent job uh, coaching our members. When you're talking to uh, coaching members about the guaranteed sale program, there's some resistance. There's um, some anxiety about the program. Um, how do you deal with that? Um, actually, I, I ask them to get out a legal pad and we start walking through the numbers. And um, we actually, we want people to trade for one of our houses, but we don't call it the guaranteed sale. We call it the home swap, which, which just indicates right away that, you know, you're trading something. So, hang on a second. Um, the home swap program basically says you're going to buy one of our houses. And that seller is going to pay, you know, eight percent of of the uh, the commission, of which five percent I'm going to give to you. So we're actually using it right now. There's a ton of upside down homeowners in Arizona, and and we're giving the five percent to the upside down homeowner. So you know, from the uh, you know the guarantee. Yeah, that, that five per, that five percent uh, may make the difference uh, between them being able to sell and not sell. Right. And see, when you when you go to a seller and, and you say, uh, and, and actually, yeah, I, I need I'm, you to explain that to everybody because I, I don't think everybody on the call gets what you just said. Okay. So well, let me just start just by back that up and, and repeat that again. Sure. Well, first of all, I mean, we have the guarantee, and we, you know, our market took a heck of a tumble, and and uh, you know, my wife, quite honestly, wasn't comfortable five uh, percent off the price because you know things weren't selling very well. So we actually modified our contract to take 8% off the price. If the seller wants the program, they pay for an FHA appraisal. I mean, FHA appraisals are notoriously low, so you're getting a conservative appraisal on the house. Our guarantee to the seller is that we will pay them or one of our investors, uh, us or one of our investors, will, will pay 8% less than your appraised value. Now, this is a worst-case scenario for you, and just understand, I mean, it's up to you how long you want the listing to, to be on the market, but you have to list it at our price. So if you want to take three months to get to our price, that's fine. But, the, you know, the guarantee doesn't start un until, um, and then we do 8% off, and we do 30 days on the market. If it doesn't sell during that time, we, we close 30 days later. 
So it's, it's basically a 60 day close. Um, but if one of our investors or us buy your property, you pay an 8% commission. If somebody else buys it, we'll do a six or a seven or whatever, you know, you've listed it at. So basically we're making our commission, if we have to buy it, two percentage points higher. Right. It costs more because they're buying insurance. Sure. So, um, right. It's e easy to rationalize. And, and the, to tell the seller, it's like, look, the only time we would ever buy your house is if we're overpaying for it because we're paying you the same price that the market wants. Right. It, it, when it, it exactly right. You, you, absolutely. I would say the same thing to, uh, to my seller. It's a, Look, you don't want me to buy it, uh, and I don't want to buy it, but the only way that I would buy it is if in 120 days, all of the dozens or hundreds of people that have viewed your home, none of them thought it was worth more than the guarantee. Right. Be thankful that I'm, I'm the, the backup here. Right. I'm the backstop. So just to put that into numbers, just on the buy side of, of the house you're listing, um, if it's a $200,000 home, that's what the FHA appraised value came in at, we would take 8% off of that, which is $16,000. Then the commission, if we have to buy it and we charge an 8% commission on $184,000, that would be another $14,700. So right off the top, we just got $30,700 off of a $200,000 conservatively priced home. So we're basically buying it for $169,000. And then on the other end, they have to buy a house from us. And that seller needs to pay an 8% commission to me as well. So if they're buying a house, and our formula is that as a guideline, your house should be, the one you're purchasing should be 1.75 times the one you're selling. So basically, if you're selling a 200, that means you're supposed to buy a 350. And I'm going to get 8% commission on 350, which is another $28,000. So if I, I don't ever say if I have to buy your house, I say if I get to buy your house, <laughs> I'd basically be paying less than $142,000 for it. For, for a $200,000 home. Yeah, conservatively priced $200,000 home. Right, right, and and let's uh, talk about that conservatively priced because you know um, because we're guaranteeing it, we are going to be conservative. You know that house right. might be two hundred five, it might be two hundred ten, but we're already going to build in a little buffer by being super conservative with our market value price before we take off our buffer, before we take off our commission, and then they got to move up and buy one of our other listings where we get a commission. It's just math. If you do the math. Like I said at the beginning of the webinar, this is the biggest no-brainer in real estate. And then, you know, what if we, um, I mean, we've done these and gotten low-ball offers on, on the house. And part of the contract says, I reserve the right. And, and first of all, it says, if we get an offer that nets you more money than my offer, you have to take it. And I reserve the right to add money to any offer. Right. So you could shore up the offer. Like, uh, there, there were cases. I had, uh, I had one case where um, uh, they were. Uh, I had one. I had one of my buyers buy one of my listings, and I had that person buy another one of my listings. Like I had a big chain of events happening here, where there was like uh, four or five transactions. So sometimes you might just even buy the house at the end, or take your commission out of the last one just to drop the price, get it firmed up, and it firms up a a chain of three or four houses, right? And, and you're the so only... You, what you're, what you're really here. saying here is, is is you can be really creative here and, uh, you know, limit your downside. And then, you know, right now, I, I don't, in most markets, in like California for sure, Arizona, Florida, um, I mean, the prices took a tumble. Our houses here have dropped, you know, 50% pretty much across the board and there's half the mortgage holders are upside down. So this is, we're actually using this program. Um, you know, the concept of it is, Hey, would the seller pay more money? Sure. So I'm going in and saying, look, Mr. Seller, you know, if we listed your house for six or seven or whatever percent, um, I'm not trying to price fix on the call here. So I'm, um, you know, you would, we would basically split that. Let's just say it was six. We would split that with the other 
um, agent. So I would get three, he would get three. But what you might not be counting on is almost every buyer out there is also asking for 3% in closing costs. So really there's three for me, three for the other agent, and three for the buyer's closing costs. You're really looking at nine. So if you, you know, would, would go up one percentage point to 10, I will go down one percentage point to five total commission. Now the leftover 5%, we're going to pay toward the homeowner who buys your home toward their upside down equity on the house they have. So if it's a $400,000 home, that would be $20,000 that we're going to pay toward the buyer's upside down home so they can buy yours. And here's the best part about this program. What if they, what if we find a buyer that doesn't need to sell a home, which quite honestly is almost all the time. Um, then guess what? We'll take the commission back to the original amount and all you need to do is pay the commission. So it's, it's like having an insurance policy that there, if there isn't a claim, you get to get your, your money back. back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I imagine mean, that you get to, you drive your car all year and if you didn't get an accident, uh, they say, okay, Bob, well, you didn't get an accident, so we're going to give you your premium back. Right. So I have more than two dozen properties right now listed at a 10% commission. And you just set it up where it's, well, you're going to pay these closing costs anyway, so you're already at nine. You're going to pay nine anyway. You just set the stage for you're going to pay it anyway. For 1% more, you can get this policy. If we don't need it, then, then you don't pay it. And, but the cool thing is, is we then post it on the MLS at, at a two and a half co-op. And if the program isn't used, we get three and a half. And, and this is, you know, what we really want everyone to start thinking about is, is being creative with your marketing. And, uh, it's just all math. And that's, uh, definitely your strength, right? Is, is just right. sitting down there with a spreadsheet, piece of paper and a pen and, 22 years at Raytheon yeah. with an engineer. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's right. Uh, all right, well, thanks a lot, Bob. Uh, that was that was uh, uh, great examples of, of how um, you've been using this and uh, being creative in your marketplace. Uh, let's go back to uh, Andrea, and we'll uh, see if there's any other uh, questions or comments. Okay. We have a, a chat question, and I'll address that from Laszlo. I'm on a 70-30 split with my broker plus a 7% Colbert Banker franchise fee. Have you heard of brokers helping the agent with guarantee by elimination by eliminating the broker side? It has a large impact no. on the numbers. No, I've never heard of a broker helping um, an agent with the guaranteed sale program, and uh, that is a problem. I and mean, if you're uh, with a brokerage that you know takes half of your commission, uh, that that's a, a problem because uh, you can't do all the creative things likely that that Bob and I were just talking about. Um, so, you know, you may want to think about that. If you're, uh, giving away half of your commission to, uh, to, uh, you know, your brokerage, you certainly aren't in a position to eliminate their half without their consent. You can try them, you can ask them, but my experience is they don't get it. And even though they would, uh, you know, overall benefit if they would work with you on this, uh, they probably, most of them won't. Unfortunately. Our next question comes from Philip Donya. Your line is open. Hi, Craig. This is Philip. Uh, Hello, the, question I have, uh, the question I have for you is uh, what would be the best of performance guarantee on the balanced market? I don't have many uh, listings. A balanced market? Um, I, I would still use the guaranteed sale program. The only time the guaranteed sale program is really less effective is when you're in a strong seller's market. Okay, so, you know, we uh, got this. We did get a seven percent dip in sales uh, over the last uh, tri uh, three months period. Yeah, so if, if, I um, think now if it's a balance. If it's a balanced market, I would use the guaranteed sale program. Okay, in the presentation and on my uh, publicity. On everything. Uh, newspaper ads, you know, print, online, on your signage, in your presentation, on everything. Okay, that's all branded. Yes, it's all branded. Uh, what are we doing with branded advertising that's different than image advertising? With image advertising, the type of advertising that your competitors use, 
they're trying to build their brand. They're trying to create an awareness. But I think we all would agree that just because buyers and sellers know who you are, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to contact you. That's why all of us have had the experience of having a friend or a relative list with somebody else. They knew you were in real estate. They just didn't list with you. So it wasn't, it wasn't an issue if they didn't know you. So that's what's great about USP advertising. We need to have something stronger than awareness. With USP advertising, what makes it different and better than image style advertising is with USP advertising, not only are you creating an awareness, you know, you've got that shock and awe factor with the guaranteed sale program. People notice it. Your, your ad must be seen before it can be responded to. But not only will people know who you are in your marketplace, but attached to your identity is a very specific and tangible benefit. So not only will they know you, they'll say, oh, yeah, that's the guy that buys homes for cash. Okay, uh, one last question. Should I have more than one USP uh, in my publicities? I would test different USPs. And when you find out what the winner is, you should be consistent with the, uh, by promoting the best one. Okay, testing again. Okay. You well, test, you. Uh, and, and if you, whichever one you determine is the winner, then you should go full blast with whatever the winner is. It should, you should plaster it everywhere. You don't want to, you don't want to keep changing your messages, um, because you'll, if you keep changing your USP message, you'll never be able to burn it into the mind of your prospects. You want to own that position in the mind of your prospects. So when they think of you, they're not confused. They know exactly who you are and what you represent and what makes you different and better than your competitors. Perfect. Uh, one last question. So like if, you, if, you were in my, if you were in my hometown, if you were in my hometown and you just walked into a grocery store and you said, hey, um, uh, have you heard of Craig Proctor? They'd say, oh, yeah, he's that Remax guy that will buy your home if it doesn't sell. Okay. Should I, Everybody uh, knows it. Okay. Should I mix uh, unbranded with branded postcards uh, in the same target area? No, no, not not this. Well, not the same postcard. You can do it in the same target no, no, area. No, no, same target area, different uh, direct mails, but uh, one. Yeah, branded, well, remember uh, it, when it's it's less branded, uh, they're not going to associate that with your branded stuff anyway, because it doesn't look like it's coming from an agent. If, uh, it's not a problem if a person calls twice uh, for both uh, uh, direct mail offers. Uh, no, I, I, the more time, the, the more they call you, the better it is. Okay. Thank you for your time, Craig. All right. Thank you. The audio question is from Mike Quayle. Your mic is open. Hey, Craig, if they uh, call and um, you say, hey, how's it work? And you say it works great. Um, you know, when can I come over and take a look at your house? So you get there, uh, but they don't want to buy one of your listings. Like, what is, like, how do you kind of let them down easy on that? Or how do you explain it? What's sort of the sequence? Because normally I go to the house, hey, how you doing? Uh, that's a great question. That's an absolutely yep. great question. Uh, here's what you don't want to happen. What you don't want to happen is they get ticked off and they go, okay, well, uh, I guess we don't qualify, Mike, so see you later. Right. Right. You, right. Um, you don't want them to think all of a sudden that, you know, Mike can't help them. So here's what you would say. Uh, if I got to your house, Mike, and, and I found out, for example, let's say that I, I found out that you are moving across the country. You're being transferred. So there's zero chance that you're going to buy one of my listings. Right. Uh, I would say, well, Mike, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, the way the program works is you have to move up and buy one of my listings. But there is a, a, another way that you're going to benefit from this program. And if you decide to list your home with me and I show the picture of my for sale sign with the sign writer, I say, this is the for sale sign, Mike, I'm going to put on your front yard. So even though I'm not going to be buying your home, I'm so motivated to get your home sold, I'm willing to buy someone else's house to make it happen. So if you decide to list your home with me, the very first thing I would do is install this sign that says move up to this home and I'll buy your home for cash. This is the way I would advertise your home all over town. Uh, trade up to this home, uh, and I'll buy your home for cash. Because the biggest problem buyers have is not buying your home. It's getting rid of their existing home because they don't want to, you know, get stuck with two homes or none at all. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing something that the other agents won't do. I'm like so super motivated to get your home sold. I'm willing to take that risk to actually buy somebody else's house. 
So what I've been able to, to hopefully successfully do is demonstrate to them how they're going to indirectly benefit from the program. Even though I'm not buying the house, you're absolutely right. It's up to you and I to show them how they're still going to benefit. And they are going to benefit because it is true. You will have that sign rider on their home. You will be promoting it in the paper as or trade or move up to this home and I'll buy your home for cash. And if they were to list with any other agent, all they may, may get are offers that are conditional on the sale of the house, which doesn't do this client any good at all because they can't get on with their plans and move across the country on the strength of a conditional offer. Yeah. Great. So I walk into the house, you know, you home, <laughs> folks ready to get your home sold. Yeah, we're ready. You walk around, build report, open up your laptop. Is that just in the middle of the presentation? It's kind of where I had, like, you have it, and then where I have it, I use your presentation. You, that's the moment that you, you bring that up? Okay, here's what will blow you away. Do you know that many, many, many times, even when they specifically call about the guaranteed sale program, and I say, well, when can I come over and, and you know, uh, tell you what we buy your home for. When I get there, many, many, many times, you know, they never even mention the guaranteed sale program. It's weird, but when you start doing it, and for those of you on, on the webinar here that are doing it, you already know that. Um, so that happens more often than the opposite. But I would get, every once in a while, I would get, you know, somebody that was hardline. It's like, look, at it, you know, um, I want you to buy my home. Now, the truth of the matter is, is I would buy any home at any price or at the right price. I'd buy any home at the, it could be the worst location, could back onto railroad tracks, on a busy road, corner line. I would, if it, the price is right, I would make a, an offer, even if they weren't moving up to one of my listings. You folks probably aren't in that position to do that, but um, you can quickly demonstrate to any seller how they're going to benefit indirectly from the program. Even if you're not buying their home, you're still willing to buy somebody else's house to get their property sold. That's a big benefit. Don't underestimate that. Okay. So when you're kind of talking about what the, you know, why you got something to buy, you know, sell your house. Well, we want to, we want to buy something. We haven't decided what it is. You just take all of it and don't say anything. <clears throat> Do your presentation. When you come to that part, say, look, sounds like you guys are, you know, moving to okay, California. Well, that one's easy, Mike, that, that one's easy, right? Cause what yeah. you're saying is, you know, they're saying, well, you know, we want to buy another house. We want to look around. Now, when they corner you for the guarantee, all you need to say is, well, uh, you know, you don't get the guarantee until you move up to one of my listings. Uh, which one of my listings do you want to buy? And they're going to say, well, you know, we don't know yet. Okay, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's get your home listed. And if, indeed, you do see one of my listings that you want to move up to, we can talk about the guaranteed sale program then. Okay. Right? Like this, you're not going to knock yourself out and give them a guaranteed price and go through all the paperwork when they haven't even decided uh, to buy one of your listings. Okay. Right? Make, see, that makes sense to them. Yeah. We have a question from Nawal. Nawal is new in the program, and she, he wants to start using the program today, but he doesn't have any business or any listings. Which program should he start with first? Well, you could run some of the other programs for sellers we talked about. How about uh, your home sold an X amount of time or I'll sell it for free? Or your home sold an X amount of time, or I'll uh, pay you 500 bucks or $1,000. When you're not really paying them, remember, it's only a reduction of the commission when it does sell. If it doesn't sell, you don't pay anything. Okay, so there's nothing stopping you from doing those two. You, it doesn't matter whether you have listings or not. I hope this uh, it clarified things for you and uh, hopefully motivated uh, you to, um, you know, Really think about which USP you feel comfortable with. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can talk to your one-on-one uh, -on -one coach. Uh, this will be something that we will be covering in more detail at the Super Conference. And a uh, special thanks to Bob Zachmeyer, Coach Zachmeyer, for being on our webinar here today. Bob, thanks for taking your time to do that. And uh, will everyone get back to work, go sell some houses. And uh, that wraps up our webinar for today. Take care.